Hello everyone, my name is Welcome to uh, another episode of Face to Face. I'm your host, Mama Zibel. Today I'm here at par with uh, uh, Osun Srin, who is the founder of uh, Joe the Change. And he himself has been into addiction for, I think, nearly 27 years. So now he's uh, running a center where he gives some kind of treatment uh, to those addicts who need to help. Uh, firstly, I want to ask you about uh, your journey of addiction and how you came through addiction. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, uh, I on behalf of our Jiva Center and all the recovery members, especially the ones, uh, the individual members, uh, we are so humbled to have this opportunity uh, to interact with you and turn to Uh My name is Sonam Sri and uh, I did drugs and alcohol. I started with drugs for the past almost 27 years plus, I was into uh, drug and alcohol addiction. Yes, there were times, uh, 2005, I went to rehab. On two, two occasions in rehab in the gym, I went to rehab. But the program never worked on me because I never worked the program faithfully. But at that moment when I went to the rehab, I had a lot of conditions. Uh, the conditions in the sense like, it wasn't an unconditional surrender. You know, I wanted to surrender from my active addiction. I went to the rehab to please my parents. I went to rehab with a lot of expectations uh, to please, to seek attentions from my relatives and some people around my life. The day I realized about myself, about my behavior, about the real me, like I said a moment ago, how irresponsible, how selfish, self-centered I was. Because when I was addicted, of course, the addiction to sugar level addiction is a chronic brain disease. And definitely not. Because once we are addicted, we started to have three V behaviors. We started to have three behaviors. The one is called compulsive behavior. The second one is impulsive behavior. Without second thought, we go around doing things. The third is obsessive behavior. A small thing. I need to drink. I'm happy. I uh, need to do drugs. I broke up with my girlfriend. I need to get drunk. I go to the party. I need a drink. I need to approach a chick, a girl. I have to get high. It's cold, I have to get drunk again. So in every aspect of life, we are very obsessive by all. So these are the, one of the biggest things. And this is what I tell the youths. When it comes to quitting, it's not a big deal. It's not a problem. Anybody, anybody, everybody can quit. All we just need to have a reason, Chimewa, Again, if you drink, my wife tells me, I'm going to walk away with my kids. Or my boss tells me, if I find you drinking again, I'm going to fire you. Zhenqi, uh, my girl from Otsopa, from my village says, see, this is the last yugu we are writing between you and your family. The another problem, Tembachin, then we are going to, you know, take this case to the court. Or the Royal Bhutan police says, Next time if we see you, we are going to then put you directly inside the prison. Or the doctor tells me that my, if you drink again or you do drugs again, you are going to die. So, any brother, there is a fear that's inside me. So, I need to have a reason. So, any reason, brother, I stop. And that's no problem. And I've stopped for almost a month. Two months, and I've seen guys who have stopped for almost a year. Then suddenly one day what happens is, he, 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 see, he finds out from a cell phone that his wife was having an affair with another man. Then this guy is back to the same track again. If he's an alcoholic, he's drinking heavily. It's a youngster who, was, who had stopped doing drugs. He finds out his girlfriend is uh, ditching for another young man. Uh, Problem she may have problem with him. So much she let me be. The problem is not with quitting. The real problem is 
living and leading a life after you have quit or after you have stopped doing drugs and alcohol. Problem So when it comes to quitting, it's not a problem. Anybody can quit. The real problem is living and leading your life after you have stopped drinking alcohol, after you have stopped doing drugs. So recovery is not a cakewalk. It's not a very, you know, Timpu Dabarism Highway Man. Recovery is a very tough journey. It is a damn slow process. It takes everything that we got. It takes a lot of patience. It's a damn slow process. And by nature, majority of addicts and alcoholic people like us, we are by nature very impatient people. Of course, we have a slogan uh, in recovery. Now, one of my good friends, the one I was mentioning, I'm not going to mention his friend, but he's kind of a mentor to me also. He tells me, Siplet, addicts give up five minutes before the miracle happens. So it is like that. And recently, I have seen a few of my guys exactly in the Suddenly, the police issue is on the way. And the next day, I smell boost from this guy. Uh, my next question is uh, How did you found it, uh, Juba, the Chain Center? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, this I must. That new one Change we must or die we will slip new one. Recovering uh, as a saying. Uh, I worked with Chitin Pinde Sopala. Chitin Pinde Sopala. I'm very grateful to especially the ED, Mr. Swang Tenzin. My late friend is called Nim Dojila. He worked in the YDF. So my other friend is called Ugin Dojila. Uh, he is one individual who brought this recovery program in our country. Uh, we've done a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of things for recovering individuals, like not only me, but so many of us. Uh, I have no words you know, to express you know, how grateful I am to him, Sila. And I bet that without him, I would have made it like recovery now. So these guys again supported me. Then suddenly my late friend he came and said, hey, so now you heard about there's a new NGO come up called Chitin Pinde. And these guys are looking for a you know, recovering individual to work as an office worker. Then and there immediately then I went to the CP office. I was so happy. Because that moment, I had no idea that that executive director was a recovering individual himself. Without judging, because I had a very bitter experiences. Before trying my job for CPA, I had tried in one of the very big CSO in Bhutan. But I couldn't even walk into the office also. And they made me stand outside. Some authority came outside, looked at me, long hair guy, all tattooed. There's no job for me. I cried at that moment, my late friend, if he wasn't there, I would have relapsed. Because I was so much committed to work. That individual told me that they, are only, they can only pay me 2,500. And I said, I will charge you Nilama. Then in there, I calculated. My bridges are the guru. Somehow I arranged with my friends to stay. But with food in Timpa, I'll do one loaf of bread. 2,500, I'll survive. Sir. But still, they didn't give me the job. But you know, coming back, when I, that executive director of Chitin Bende, he warmly welcomed me. No more questions. The only thing I asked about is, are you willing to, or are you committed? And I said, the only thing I can assure you good self is I'm very dedicated, I'm very committed. Because in my life, my first priority 
is my recovery asset. And in the back of the mind, I had learned that it was not just helping about helping other people, because in truth, I was helping myself. I knew that. And I said, I'm very dedicated. I'm very committed. I could not show you this. I knew she will. So I started with the outreach worker. I worked with CPA for almost one decade, now, 10 years. Okay, there's so many stories, but to cut it short. And while working in the grassroots label, uh, 2012, I, with the permission of our executive director and support from, I haven't seen the proprietor yet. Uh, Galinka Resort image. Later on, 2013, I asked around, I wanted to acknowledge my heartfelt gratitude, but I heard that that Jinda had, had you know, gone to Australia, so much ago, 2013, but 2012, this was one individual who contributed 100,000 NU. Because, well, working as an outreach worker in the capital, I had some, uh, I had supported somebody and maybe the later on this guy heard that uh, this particular Sonam Sri was looking for some donations uh, to, you know, establish a drop-in center in Poro Semiti. And with that 100,000 NU, uh, established DIC in Poro. Of course, it was entirely, you know, under the umbrella of our cheating the Sopa support the then there was the individual club with the Kachi I must love because this individual who contributed with all this we bought furnitures, curtains, food mat, water boilers, a small curry cooker, small boiler. This is how then while working for 10 years in the grassroots label, I personally experienced I personally observed that there were so many people, and I could identify myself. I saw that there were so many supportless youths, literally in the streets, nowhere else to go. I'm from Tashigangla. I've come here to visit my elder sister, who's married with a man, here, they're residing here in Borom. I came to my sister, but because of my behavior, because of my attitude, how long will my brother-in-law take it, Silla? So after some time, because of me, my brother-in-law and my Ajin, my Anna is going to have some problems. And ultimately, odd man out. So I'm from Tashigan, where do I go? How long I will stay in my friend's house, Silla? So this is where the Jura comes in. Uh, we take in the support list. It's not just about addicts and alcoholic. And I've been doing this in Paro for the last 13 years. Even if, doesn't mean it is that he is an alcoholic, he's an addict. Even if he's somebody who doesn't have a place to go, and it comes to our I mean, knowledge, or into, we hear about this individual. We will definitely, you know, bring him to our center. Whatever little we have, we'll share with him. Whatever we have, you know, the spaces. We, sh we give him shelter, we give him food. Now. So I thought it is very important to us to have a, in Canada, a half a home, Sina, to have a half a home for these destitute people. Especially addicts, alcoholics, mm -hmm. maybe I've seen old people also, I've seen monks, and I've seen, you know, people from every background, races, that's it, she's tortured and I And this is how the idea came up. Very honestly, to speak from the very core of my heart, I'm not just doing these services out of my passion. Uh, I'm not doing the services to seek anyone's attention or seek anyone's appreciation. For an ungrateful son like me, irresponsible son like me, 
this recovery is redemption. This service for me is redemption. Mashaba Pizuro Veriginimlo. Terimlo Nagi Shisla. Because that point of my life when I was doing drugs, that point of my life when I was drinking alcohol, my addiction made me so selfish that I could never realize it was not just me who was getting destroyed. But I was literally, literally destroying my, I destroyed my entire family. I was committing indirectly, I was committing suicide, but somehow directly I was murdering my parents, my Abba, my Amma, my Ajim, the few individuals, the people who loved me dearly, who always wanted to see me be a better man, who always wished that I, I, I turned out to be a good human being. I was so selfish that I couldn't realize that I am grateful. Whatever said I'm done at the end of the day, I feel so grateful for having the second life above the Lord, for having the opportunity to redeem myself. I am grateful for having the second life above the Lord. And I try to connect with youth. I try to motivate them, inspire them by sharing my experiences. I try to give them hope that, come on, brother, you can do it. When a man like me, who was literally, you know, wasted his seven years in the streets, when I can change, when the world had given up on me, when I can change, you, know, you definitely can, Samitil. Thank you so much, sir. The next thing is, uh, how do you function in your center and what are the challenges you're facing while running the center? We have no support at all. Uh, before last and last, I was on the work of giving up. I nearly relapsed also. Actually, I had decided now. As best things now, enough of the services, man. In reality, there's nothing left. Now that's it, sky is the limit. I was literally emotionally distressed that day. I got into depression. I'm still having, having a lot of mental issues now. And I started getting into self pity. I started to become very resentful, again towards the world. A very positive guy, I came out from the rehab. Not enlightened me, but I came with full spiritual awakening. But to run a center, a small center, was a very heavy, you know, burden for me. It is not a burden, but load for me. So. Um, I have no words, Lord. We never gave up, Lord. Despite all the challenges, struggles, you know, mm, obstacles that came our way, Lord. Kept on pushing ourselves forward. Kept on pushing ourselves forward, Lord. Then, last year, Lema Chilu, Uma Rasot, or it is called Uma Kumo Salam, And especially, our Madam Kamichikila. Then we got small fundings now. Then Najinam then came out to wholeheartedly better. Najinam then took us under their wings. Once again, I thank you so much uh, for being part of our program. Yes. And hopefully, uh, uh, I pray for like a uh, good establishment of Juru uh, Adi It means a lot. Uh, and uh, thank you. To the viewers, thank you so much uh, for supporting Bhutan Today. For more updates, keep following Bhutan Today. Thank you.